Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode on the Rachel Varga podcast. In today's show, I'm going to be sharing with you a story about how I used something called nootropics. If you've ever seen that show Limitless, you'll see how Bradley Cooper takes these different pills and gets all this wild energy and he can do so much in his world, but he has crashes and then there's side effects and all these things. So what we're going to talk about here are nootropics that are actually going to help fuel your brain. And when your brain's working better, you're sleeping better, your skin will inevitably show you the fruits of your efforts. I'm going to be sharing how I use nootropics on a recent stage event where I was one of six headliner speakers at a fantastic biohacking live conference in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I'll be sharing with you how something like magnesium, like this magnesium breakthrough by, by optimizers, helps me sleep better and helps my body feel better. And we're gonna talk about this very wonderful link between sleep and the skin. We're also gonna be diving into the science of different cofactors and nutrients that can help us synthesize more collagen in the skin. It's not just about taking collagen. It really is truly about giving our bodies what it needs to do what it wants to do and allow the environment around us to be as pure as possible, which is where your air water lighting, electromagnetics, and detoxing all come into play. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. We have Matt Gallant returning to the show. He is the CEO and co-founder of Bioptimizers and has a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. He's been a strength and conditioning coach for multiple pro athletes, a self-defense instructor, and has over 15 years of experience formulating supplements. He's also a serial entrepreneur that has built over 13 profitable companies. So we got BioOp, Bioptimizers here. We also got Newtopia here. We're going to be talking about these specific companies, their products, and how they help me and how they can help you as well. Welcome, Matt Gallant, CEO and founder of Bioptimizers and Newtopia. How are you today? I'm awesome. I really enjoyed our first episode, so I'm, I was happy to see you on the calendars today. Yeah, it's always fun when I'm doing an interview with a another fellow guitar player. And I remember the first time you, you got on screen here with me, mm -hmm. I saw your guitars in the background and I had my Gibson Les Paul classic up too. And we have this, you know, musician guitarist bond going as well as a biohacker bond. So it's great to have you back as well. Thanks. All right. What I would love to pick your brain on having formulated so many different products on the market mm -hmm. is number one, how can we feed the body? to help with the synthesis of collagen through important cofactors and ingredients? This is the million dollar question. How do we make more collagen? How do we keep the collagen that we have? And what are the best supplements and ingredients on the market to take? Before I answer that question, I wanna answer that question from a, a core principles perspective, because we know when we formulate things, our strategy is always to optimize the pathways from building blocks down to the target molecules. <clears throat> so for an example, you know, with melatonin, there's things you can give the body some precursors and then some cofactors that will help convert, for example, magnesium into serotonin and serotonin to melatonin. And it's the same thing with pretty much any molecule. So with skin, with collagen, and of course collagen supplements have become incredibly popular and, and the literature is is good there's some good data however when you look at the list of cofactors you can add to increase the synthesis even more that's where i think the magic is like you know the collagen is obviously part of it but things like glycine i mean i've really become fascinated with glycine in the last year plus i started playing with it maybe like two or three years ago and then I started reading more about it and just realized I think almost everybody's deficient in glycine. So glycine is an amino acid. And probably the optimal dose for people is 10 to 20 grams. And it does, it is a cofactor 
and does help with the synthesis of collagen in the skin. And we've released a new sleep product called Sleep Breakthrough. I mean, I'll make sure you get some if you haven't got some uh, already. And you know, we're using three grams of glycine in it. And people are noticing that their skin is better. And again, we, we didn't design Sleep Breakthrough for better skin. But again, the three grams is really helping. And specifically for sleep, it does like lower body temp. It improves REM. It helps create relaxation without drowsiness. And here's my favorite benefit which shows up in the, in the literature is that it will help you feel better if you're sleep deprived. So for, for whatever reason, you only got like six hours of sleep or, or five or less than eight, seven, um, you will feel a lot better the next day. So it's a really incredible amino acid. And right now we're working on a, you know, we're calling it the ultimate skin drink. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the prototype name. And yeah, I mean, glycine, collagen, and, a host of other interesting molecules are in there. So I don't have to make bone broth anymore because I don't really like eating chicken because mm -hmm. it's not great for you. I eat, I love eating eggs, put them on the salad, all that stuff. And I will make bone broth because that's super high in glycine from you know the bones from the chicken. That's not always super convenient to make your own bone broth. However, I do notice when I am increasing my glycine levels through consuming different types of bone broth, which I will kind of mix up a little bit, beef bone broth, chicken bone broth. Beef is the best one for me, supposedly, through analyses. Mm. If I can take a skin drink that's got it, I mean, that's great. So I look forward to sharing that when that's available and uh, giving my objective review and analysis on it, maybe even with some before and after photos. Does that sound good? That'd be great. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm excited about this coming down the line because I love glycine for my skin, hair, and nails also. In your opinion, having formulated a second sleep breakthrough product, which I'm obsessed with the magnesium breakthrough. I just got to say this. Um, magnesium breakthrough is key to take before sleep. And the nights that I do take it before sleep, I definitely notice that my sleep scores are better. I just uh, cracked a hundred percent sleep score on eight sleep the other night. So I must be doing certain things very right. Wow. And that also includes taking magnesium before bed. I do this weird thing with taking like 20 different capsules before going to bed all in one go. That's my biohacker flex is wow. I have everything in my head and I just down it all at once. It's, it's pretty wild to do. I don't recommend doing that at home. It's kind of unsafe. It is a bit of a choking hazard. If you're used to doing it, it's, it's, it is what it is. What's your favorite uh, sleep stack with magnesium and your new sleep breakthrough? And also, what is your understood link between sleep and the skin? Yeah, I think sleep, you know, when you're thinking about what's the number one thing I can do to improve my health, I think that movement is certainly way up there. Uh, and sleep to me, movement and sleep are probably the top two, of course, great food, good nutrition. But if you think about it, you can, you'll dive much faster and not sleeping enough than you will fasting. I'm actually fasting right now. And I will take 20 plus capsules on the air a little bit later. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, great are, are we going to have a little bit of a, a biohacker flex here? Live on the show, Matt. <laughs> I know what your record is. I'm probably down <laughs> like 40, 40 plus in one shot. Um, yeah. Wow. These, these are a little, little smaller. So I'm cheating a little bit there, but yeah, obviously sleep on the first part of the sleep cycle is where you typically get deep sleep, which is triggered by melatonin. And then they call it the prolactin cycle. That's where a lot of the rejuvenation hormones are happening, growth hormone and a, a whole long list of other really beneficial hormones. Later, you will be cycling in and out of REM. And that's where there's a lot of memory consolidation, emotional processing, memory formation, neurotransmitter production. So really the way to look at it, it's the deep sleep is for your body. And then REM is for the brain. I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, but that's the gist of it. So in terms of for your skin, I mean, if you're not getting deep sleep, your skin's going to get compromised. You will look older. And if you're getting great sleep, you will. There's a reason they call it beauty sleep. So there's a lot of things you can do to 
optimize your sleep. One of the things that destroys collagen is excess cortisol. I and mean, cortisol is not all bad. It's a really important. We need, obviously, we need it in the morning. We tend to get a pretty big spike of it in the, in the AM. It's really important. But if your cortisol spiked before you go to bed, first of all, it will destroy your sleep. And obviously, you're not going to get the, the beauty benefits. So one easy pro tip on sleep is you got to avoid the second wind. And the way to do that is one, to have a target bedtime. Most people don't have that. And target bedtime simply means you're trying to go to bed at the same time every day. And I do think people have different chronotypes. Some people seem to be morning people. Some people are night owls. I'm one of them. And there was a great book called I'm the night Power owl too. There you go. There's a great book called The Power of When, which covers different chronotypes and even kind of how if you're with a partner and they're a different chronotype, kind of how you can sync up and, and live a better life. And it just makes sense from an evolutionary biology perspective that in a tribe or a clan, you want to make sure you've got different people to protect the clan at different times. If everybody's a morning person, well, you're going to be very protected at night and vice versa. So whatever your target bedtime is, um, the key is to be consistent because what will happen is if you power through that and, you know, if you're using if it's too much light, you're stimulated by TV, video games, your phone, whatever you're stimulated by, you can stay up. And then there's a cortisol spike that will give you a second win. And I, and I was addicted to that for many, many years. Like it was very difficult for me to, to go to bed. I just wanted to stay up. I like staying up. I like the feeling of the second wind. Cortisol feels really good, right? It, like it, it's, it's a good feeling. So, you know, it took me a while to get over that. And the key is like, usually you'll start yawning like 15 to an hour, 15 minutes to an hour before your target bedtime. It's a similar process. Like you, you ghrelin gets spiked about an hour before we eat. So your body's telling you, yeah, get ready for bed. <clears throat> and that's when you want to take your sleep supplement. So typically about an hour before your target bedtime, take your magnesium breakthrough, take your sleep breakthrough, and then you, you're basically feeding your body, again, the building blocks, things like melatonin, sorry, things like magnesium, which will convert to serotonin, which converts into mag to melatonin um, an hour before bed. So yeah, you want to feed your body kind of all the sleep molecules it needs. And, you know, the sleep breakthrough, you'll feel it within about 20, 30 minutes. The pharma GABA, the L-theanine will start hitting you and then you'll want to go to bed. And that's one of my favorite things about sleep breakthrough is it makes me want to go to bed. Like, it, you know, I actually feel tired. I feel like, you know, it's time to, to, to hit the sack and then you go to bed. If people are taking melatonin, it's really critical that you actually take it in bed. Like it needs to be pitch black. The light will destroy melatonin in near real time. Here's the shocker that most people are not aware of when it comes to taking melatonin. Your brain will only produce naturally about 10 to 80 micrograms. And for a long time, I tried to make melatonin work. I've been you know, using sleep molecules now for going on, I think eight years trying every combination, every stack, and there's not too much I haven't tried. And melatonin never worked for me. There's people that have a genetic variant that will cause them to wake up after five hours. They'll get a body temperature spike. I've heard Tim Ferriss talk about it, Andrew Huberman as well. So it never worked for me. However, when I got it down to literally about 50 micrograms, it, it's working incredibly well. And it just makes sense. That's what my, my brain would naturally produce. So we have another sleep product come, called Dream Optimizer coming out in February. It's a spray. It's 18 micrograms per spray. So you can really, really you know, control the dose and get the perfect dose for your brain. And it also has California poppy seeds. So it really cranks REM up significantly. I took some last night and had some really interesting, fun, vivid dreams. So yeah, there's a lot of really powerful sleep molecules, um, glycine, L-theanine, GABA. When you, when you look at the data on the insomniacs, there's two things that pop up. One is they're about 30% deficient in GABA. And GABA is the molecule of chill. It's a neurotransmitter. And it's, it's an awesome molecule. And what we've done is we tested pretty much every source of GABA there is, valerian root, 
GABA, Pharma GABA, and a host of, uh, of other ones. And we really settled on Pharma GABA. We think it's the strongest one there is. It's powerful and very effective. <clears throat> the other one, another one of my favorite sleep molecules is L-theanine. Um, I've been using L-theanine probably almost every night for the last six, seven years. It works every time. It's an amino acid derived from green tea. And, you know, first of all, if you take it with caffeine, it's got some really cool benefits. It'll help remove any jitteriness and extend the benefits of the caffeine. That's why a lot of people prefer green tea or yerba mate over coffee. So uh, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of, of L-theanine, pharma GABA, glycine, and then all the minerals. On the mineral side, of course, we talked about magnesium and magnesium bisglycinate has the best sleep data. However, when you stack the magnesiums, and by the way, we're, we're literally starting to do some really interesting blood cell research in our lab with combining magnesiums to prove what we've known for a long time, which is synergy, and we're seeing it. So when you start combining magnesiums, you will get a much higher uptake in red blood cells, which is the first place the magnesium will go, compared to any single form of magnesium. So it's really cool to see that data. This is data we'll probably publish later this year. And then when you start adding cofactors, uh, you will get even more positive results. And your know, cofactors is something that anybody who's been in science and supplements and biology for a long time have heard. But I think people have no clue how much of an impact they have. And what we're seeing is that adding even micro doses of the right cofactors will improve the effectiveness anywhere from 50 to 300% with almost any thing that we're trying to optimize, whether it's enzymes when we're completely rebuilt our enzyme formulas are coming out this summer, probiotics. It doesn't really matter when you add the right cofactors, it will, it just increases the results massively. And that's what we believe is also happening with magnesium breakthrough and also with sleep breakthrough. We, we've added P5P, which is a great cofactor for the magnesium to convert in serotonin. Um, calcium is a great cofactor to help convert tryptophan into serotonin. So yeah, we're really, really big on cofactors. We actually just bought a database of a billion molecules and we have a guy full time that's just doing nonstop in silico modeling to give us a list of cofactors to, tr to test and try. So yeah, this is the world we live in and it's really exciting. Amazing. One of the reasons why Matt is back on the show is because you and your fellow co-founder Wade Lightheart are some of the coolest guys I've ever had the chance of working with. And the products and the people that I highlight here on the show are people I really genuinely like and want to encourage you to support their businesses because they're literally on a mission to help you get the best sleep, get the best digestion, and be your best versions. I mean, at the end of the day, that is really the purpose of why I'm here is to help support you with the direction on really great products to help you out. Y'all are going to be buying different supplements anyways. You might as well be supporting great companies with good people behind the scenes make some great products. You mentioned a couple of things, and especially in relation to the blood, I would love to see the blood improve in more people, especially to mitigate radiation impacts from the environment. The verdict is out that radiation that we're exposed to, I'm not going to use keywords here, read between the lines, radiation that we're exposed to with a number of our devices mess with our blood. They are interfering with the electromagnetic interactions with our blood, so we're not getting as good blood flow to the brain, to the skin, and other key organs, as well as gunging up the machinery of detoxification of cellular metabolic byproducts and CO2 and all of that. So, sorry, what I would love to see is our products coming out on the market. This is some ideas for you here. Get these wheels turning for grounding ingredients, ingredients in a specific type of supplement that can act to ground the blood. Cause that really is one of the things that is impacting the skin. I'm doing a literary review on the radiation impacts of blood flow to the skin. The verdict is out. There's already PubMed studies on the skin and the eyes. This stuff is becoming more common knowledge, but having more products out there to help regulate the body's electromagnetics could be helpful if throughout the day we're busy working and we don't have the opportunity to get outside and ground 
our body's electromagnetics by contacting the earth. So let these wheels turn. Uh, I think that this could be a very important product to consider in the future. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that this could be something that could be consumed, a grounding and balancing product for the blood? Because you did mention the blood, so I wanted to ask. I doubt it, but let me just a couple comments on grounding, also known as earthing. First, I read the book when it came out, bought the grounding sleep sheets when they came out, and the updated opinion on grounding sheets. So there's these sheets, these bed sheets that you can basically ground. And again, I'm 20 floors up, and unfortunately, the verdict is that unless you're literally putting a pole in the ground that the grounding sheets don't really work. Obviously the natural ways to go on the grass and put your feet on the ground or go in the ocean. The ocean's probably the most powerful ground way to ground. And I heard recently that if you take a shower, there's actually some grounding, the grounding's happening. Um, I, I do want to talk about EMF a little bit and, ways you can potentially counter that. So one of the things that happens with EMF and what we're seeing is that there's a flood of calcium in the cell. So this, there's a basically too much calcium flooding different cells if they're overexposed to EMF. And I think that's one of the things that magnesium breakthrough can help with. Uh, magnesium is very powerful at countering excess calcium in the body. And, you know, one of the most interesting sensations is if anybody's ever done a, an injection of magnesium, whether it's through an IV or, you know, any, any form is that you will feel the magnesium hit certain parts of the body. Um, if you've got calcium buildup in joints, you might feel it there. Uh, you tend to feel it in the genitals, which is interesting. Um, heart area, you'll feel it. And it's really powerful. And you, I think what's happening is just kind of bonding with the calcium and help to counter that. So I think magnesium breakthrough can help with that. Another thing a lot of people don't think about, and I bought a device and I forget the name of it, but you plug it in your wall and it will measure the amount of dirty electricity that's in your place. And my, the amount of dirty electricity I had in my penthouse was like off the charts. And then there's these other devices you plug into the, the wall and it will diminish the dirty electricity massively. And there's a great book on dirty electricity. So literally, the dirty electricity can create these magnetic, um, basically these magnetic fields that I think are not very healthy. I think when, you, when we're talking about frequencies, which is really what we're talking about, and I think there's frequencies that are good for the body. I, I, I bought pretty much every PMF device out there. And there's frequencies that are not very good for the body. I think dirty electricity is one of them. One last point on EMF. And, you know, I think a lot of people can get overly paranoid about these things. Proximity is the key. So if you have a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, basically the closer you are, just like red light therapy, like the closer you are, the more impact it's having. Obviously, red light's a very good thing, whereas Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are maybe not as good. And I noticed that with my Aura Ring. So I've own every version of the O-ring. And when I tried like kind of split testing, having the Bluetooth on versus airplane mode. And, you know, it's just an end of one, but I would say for me that having Bluetooth directly on the skin was negatively impacting my sleep. So. Yeah. It's funny when I go to events and I see people wearing the O-ring, you can tell who the, like the true health conscious biohackers are if they have the O-ring on airplane mode <laughs> it's like a trick question oh you got the aura ring on is that on airplane mode and then sometimes i'll get the response what what are you talking about or yes of course it is it's like okay you know what's up mm -hmm. and this is really important to talk about this stuff so this is an idea to plant this seed for you guys over at utopia and by optimizers to potentially look at making a product with these uh types of um, assistance and love that you mentioned that the magnesium breakthrough has the potential capability of doing just that. Now, one of the reasons why I brought that up is we all want to live a long, full life. And we want to look hot in the process. So I do one-on-one -on -one consultations for the ladies and the gents across the globe and help you figure out which products to use at home, which biohacking, air, water, lighting, electromagnetic detox options could be helpful too, to rolling. And then of course, what we could do in the clinic 
to help rejuvenate the skin, promote more collagen, add more volume, and all that stuff. Now, with that stuff aside, with the rejuvenation side of things, with the biohacking side of things, in your opinion, what are some other body, mind, spirit, energy practices that can help cultivate resilient radiance and beauty? And maybe even think of a few people around you who are radiant. And I mean yourself, we could use yourself as a bit of a case study here because I think you're just absolutely stunning, you're handsome, you have wonderful mental clarity, you have very good uh, social cues, and I like the way you present yourself. But I'm just curious, what's your take on this concept of resilient radiance and its tie into beauty? If you think of maybe other ladies and gents that really strike a chord and make an impression, what are they doing? So I'm a copywriter and I'm, I'm a big fan of combining words to create new concept and resilient radiance has my brain processing that because, yeah, I've, obviously I think a lot about resilience and radiance but i've never combined the two words so i love that i had to come up with that last night with uh katie moore the yeah day, this is a fresh one yeah it's a fresh well, that's one. the power when you combine two words and you kind of stop people in their tracks um that's the power of good copy and good good you know, wordsmithing yeah i think resilience when people are resilient uh, i'll start with that part i think that you know you you're just, you have a calmness around you. Like, you know, you, I think if your baseline is to be Zen and serene, it's very attractive. You know, on the flip side, when people are frantic and panicking and have anxiety, it's a hard energy to be around. So I think there's a natural radiance to resilience. Like it's just a really attractive energy. I mean, you know, I was hanging out with a good friend of mine on Saturday and he moved back to Panama and he's probably the most chill guy I know. And it's just, it's just a pleasant vibe. Whereas, you know, I have some other friends that are more, they're on the frantic side of the equation of the spectrum. And, you know, you can only handle that energy so long before you feel a little bit uh, drained. So yeah, being resilient is, is powerful. Um, I will tell you the number one thing I've done to improve my resilience. And I feel like I did this, this wheel of life exercise. If you've done that, it's, it's a common thing. Your own journey. Well, you kind of score yourself in the different areas, like from one to ten, and it's an interesting graphic or diagram. It's, it's a wheel, and it was, we did that. I was in a mastermind for a week in Costa Rica, and the area that I scored myself the highest in is was actually emotions and this emotional health, and a big part of that is resilience. I, I scored myself higher than in any other area, and the main thing I've done has been to clean house emotionally. And what I mean by that is you're creating an exhaustive inventory of every micro trauma that's ever happened to me. And I think the best book on the topic that really set me on the path is the, the body keeps the score. I think it's a masterpiece. And the premise of the book is very simple. And that is when things happen to us that hurt us, and we don't have the skills or the resources to process that pain, we will suppress it and it will get stored in our limbic system. And the book obviously shares a lot of tools to help you process these things. And I, the, I would call the axiom of healing is the same for all modalities. And that is you shift your nervous system into healing mode, also known as parasympathetic, and you bring up the pain and you process it. And if you can remain in parasympathetic in parasympathetic mode while you're experiencing that sensation and sensations are really key word there and you just stick with it long enough, it will fade. And that, what I just shared is a very simple but powerful technique. And then you, there's EFT, which I'm certified in, which is probably one of my favorites. I find it very fast. I can process negative sensations. Of course you're of certified in EFT. Like you know, I can process that in three to five minutes. I was um, you know, partners with Dawson Church, who's phenomenal. Uh, I love his his books and has published dozens of papers on EFT. It's a credible modality. Um, but the thing I've done the most is neurofeedback. And again, all credit goes to you know, BioCybernaut and Four Years of Zen, which is Dave Asprey's place. And they're really phenomenal at guiding people through a very structured forgiveness process that allows you to 
process old resentments and fears and all these things. And what happens is as you clean house, your, your reactivity diminishes with each thing that you clear. Because if you think about reactivity, it's literally just your amygdala perceiving something as a threat. And if you remove all the things that hurt you from the past, suddenly things that used to be threatening are no longer threatening. You're just, you know, it doesn't feel like a threat anymore. And I think that's the key to resilience. Like to me, like I've, I've noticed my resilience is up, you know, hundreds of percentage points compared to the past because I'm not reacting, you know, and so much of my energy in the past was lost because, you know, I might lose it two or three days a month um, in a state of reactivity and trying to, you know, be calm because I was so upset about whatever. And I just, these are things I haven't experienced in many years. And obviously magnesium breakthrough, there's actually a really cool, here's my story on magnesium breakthrough and, and here's how it actually came about. So I used to kind of be on the edge of burnout all the time. Uh, I just worked a lot and didn't understand how to process and, and things. And I didn't know how to take care of my nervous system. And it's really the key to, to resilience is tr to treating your nervous system and taking care of it. So I was fried and I was in a place where I couldn't even drink a cup of coffee. I remember I was on a call with Dave Asprey. I said, Dave, I want to drink coffee, but I can't. I literally get fried. And that's how it felt. Like I would drink a cup of coffee and the best word I can describe the state was frazzled. I just felt frazzled. Like I felt like my nervous, my nerves were frayed. It was not a very pleasant state. And then three people, including Dr. Mercola and Charles Poliquin, God bless his soul. And then another mentor of mine all told me, you know, you need to, to load up on magnesium and Poliquin it was an absolute genius. He was, you know, my opinion, greatest strength coach of all time, coached 400 Olympians in strength coaching. He said, if you combine magnesiums and he was combining four different ones, you will get synergy. And I started doing that and I started loading up on magnesium. What happened is six weeks into it, I was just in a baseline Zen state. And then the next question, because I'm a natural optimizer, it's my, one of my favorite things in the world to do is like, okay, how can we, make this better. We started you know, testing different magnesiums and we, we landed on seven and we started adding cofactors and it's just been magical. So I think that the magnesium also gives you a, a level of resilience that is absolutely awesome. And I'm going to share my favorite magnesium breakthrough testimonial. It was a guy that told me that his wife asked them I'm going to bleep myself here, but he says, she asked him, why are you not an a-hole anymore? And he was taking magnesium breakthrough for like five or six weeks. So that's my favorite testimonial uh, because that's how much of a change you can experience when your nervous system is regulated. Like when you're just not trapped in fight, flight, freeze, and you're at the upper end of the sympathetic curve all the time. Um, what happens is, yeah, we, we kind of become the worst version of ourselves. So, you know, I've kind of gone from time management to energy management to nervous system management over time. And I would say the, the improvements on the quality of life on nervous system management have just been so profound. And, you know, feeding it magnesium has been one of the top things I've done. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing all of that. It's it's almost like he'd listened to my solo podcast episode I published yesterday, talking all about strategies to keep your face relaxed. People ask me all the time, what do you think about facial yoga and all these facial exercises? And I gave my full opinion in that episode. If you haven't listened to that, facial wrinkles, facial yoga. And it really does come down to stepping out of that higher brain, right? That's survival. That is one of the biggest crushers of the beautiful, delicious, soft, and sexy feminine energy. If you are in a state of survival all the time, your brain's not going to be working right. If you are in a place where you feel safe, you feel cared for, 
you have what you, what you need, you're in gratitude, you're living from the heart, your face will show that. So when it comes down to cultivating resilient radiance, so basically you can cruise through what the universe or life throws at you. It's not going to throw you too much, more than you can handle. But I got to say, just testimonial here, magnesium breakthrough has saved me as well as some of your parasite products, the mass enzymes, you make some amazing products. And I'm just really grateful for your support over the years as well. Thanks. And yeah, thank you. The final thing I wanted to touch on was how your nootropics literally allowed me to move through stress as one of my first headliner on stage events, West Palm Beach, Florida, a while ago. How can nootropics give us a better brain and skin? We're going to end on the Nootopia now because you, you work with both companies. And I, I just love, I love taking your nice, your nootropics for peak and powerful performance on stage to the effect where I had all my supplements set up behind stage. I was taking the, um, one of your Nootopia products and everyone else wanted to take what I was taking as well because they could see that I was cool, calm, collected. I was ready to rock and roll on stage. It was super clear. So here I am. I uh, had to go back up to my room, get the rest of my stash, and was sharing it with the rest of the speakers. So for nootropics and the brain and the skin, what would you say are some of the key connections there? Probably to overcome things like cortisol and hack that and stay in a more peaceful, rested, heart-centered space. But what's your take on nootropics for better brain function and better skin function? Yeah, I'm going to talk about something I've never talked about as far as nootropics. I've done a few podcasts about it. And that is the difference between men and women. And this is this is data we have internally that we talk a lot about. Um, just haven't shared it very publicly yet. So one of the big differences between men and women, obviously, is testosterone. And what most people don't realize is that a lot of dopamine is derived from testosterone. And that's one of the main biological reasons why men in general just have more drive sometimes. That's just women have credible levels of drive as well. However, in general, women have a little bit less drive and that's the biological reason. So one of the powerful things about nootropics is that a woman can now increase her drive. And what we've seen, and again, there's exceptions, but I'm just generalizing here. What we've seen in general is that men are too far on the sympathetic side. <laughs> so it's very beneficial for a lot of men to actually pull back because you know, we call it the apex zone, which again, the, the nervous system is a spectrum. The way to look at it is like a minus 10 to a plus 10. A minus 10 is, is your deep sleep. You're absolutely in the, the pinnacle of relaxation. A plus 10, you're in a life and death situation. You know, bears chasing you or something, right? It's, it's a very, you know, the peak of, of stress. And what happens is our brain's performance, and there's some great research. And again, when I used to do hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, the, my teacher was a Navy SEAL, talked about this research all the time. And I read it. It's really fascinating. It's called Yerke Dotson. It's if you just Google Yerke Dotson research, you can read it. Pretty old research. But they were doing these fascinating experiments on stress and performance. And what they found was if people got too stressed, their performance just nosedived. Like there was this clear threshold and it's a U-shaped curve where if you don't have enough stress, your performance will be negatively impacted. And if you have too much, it's negatively impacted. But if you're right in the middle, that is peak performance. And then another really, really important point, and it's something I also learned in my, when my favorite class in university was actually the nervous system uh, class that we did. And there's a great um, textbook on it. And the more you train, the more stress you can handle. And that's really the difference between like the top athletes in the world versus people that are really, maybe they're great, but you know, when you put TVs on them and they're competing for a World Cup or whatever they're competing for, the 
more trained athletes that can truly manage their stress, they're just able to outperform people that will get crushed by that level of stress. Now let's go back to men and women. Women tend to be, and again, I'm generalizing, but tend to be more on the parasympathetic side. So what we found is when women take the right nootropics, it'll push them right into that apex zone. And a lot of women's favorite nootropic is called Power Solution, which is probably our strongest one. Uh, Power Solution, Ultimate Focus, those two. And I took the ultimate focus on stage. And boy, was ever ultimately focused in all the right ways. Yeah, it, it just, it, you know, that it's a great testament to, again, if you're slightly parasympathetic, naturally taking something that stimulates you will tend to bring you right into the middle. And that's where you want to be. Whereas, whereas men, if a, if a man is already naturally aggressive and very driven, you're taking something like power solution might push them too far to the edge. So for them, they could benefit from something like a magnesium breakthrough and taking other nootropics like a brain flow or an upbeat. So they're more in the middle than too far out to the sympathetic edge. So that's really a, a, an important model that we talk about in our brilliant mind blueprint that if you really learn to kind of manage where you're at and become aware of where you're at and take the right nootropics at the right time, um, it can really transform your, your performance in life. And yeah, nootropics do a lot of interesting things anywhere from improving your focus, which is primarily choline to improving your EQ. For an example, if you increase your serotonin and your GABA, you tend to be a little more extroverted. That's why some people like to drink and like some people are just genetically just genetically have less serotonin. I'm one of them. So for me, nootropics are a really powerful way to improve my EQ. And that for me is really important. You know, there's, there's been times in my life where I was just incredibly driven and the, the, the neurochemical stack to be an a-hole is a lot of dopamine, a lot of adrenaline, a lot of noradrenaline and a deficiency in serotonin and GABA and these other ones. And, you know, certain drugs like Adderall or cocaine, that's what they do. You know, they, they maximize those neurochemicals, whereas you become deficient in some other ones. So really learning to kind of balance your neurochemistry and optimizing it based on what you need is an incredible strategy that will transform your performance. So, yeah. Beautifully said. Well, this uh, is making a lot of sense to me because I've spent the last few years doing pretty intense Nice, down the hatch, nice job, man. Doing some pretty intense cold therapy up to about 10 minutes to my jawline in the Canadian Ocean in frozen mountain fall, mountain waterfall runoff, basically ice boarded myself. So I wow. spent years actually putting myself in really uncomfortable situations, doing all this biohacking stuff, taking the right adaptogens, the right supplements and cofactors, learning how to regulate that higher brain so that I'm not constantly in that fight or flight so that when I do go through tremendous amount of stressors that I can move through it with grace and ease and not have it show up in my body with you know lots of people when they go through stuff you see it in their hair skin and nails and I'm telling you if you want to be radiant if you want to be resilient AF and you want to look hot in the process being a biohacker, taking your adaptogens, taking your nootropics, staying on top of taking your magnesium are all really important things to do. And, you know, I'll right, right here be a, a testimonial of just how far you can push yourself, what you can overcome and look awesome in the process and not have it wreck your face and lose all your hair and, uh, you know, drain your adrenals and all of that. Because that's going to, you know, we go through life. Life's got ups, it's got downs. You're never going to be given more than you can uh, work through. And I just, I love what you guys are doing, making good products for the ladies, the gents to help balance this stuff out. Yeah, we've got a, we got a female line of products coming out this year and we have male products, including uh, sexual male enhancement products. That's just incredible. Ooh, tell us about that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a Mr. News creation. Um, I love I, Mr. Nates. He's been on the show too, everybody. Yeah, he he's the best formulator we've worked with. We've worked with about eight 
for formulators and he's, he's the best. Um, and yeah, he's created a whole, you know, right now we're just calling it man stacks, but yeah, it's a PDE five mitigator. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> so, and then on the female side, have you tried it out, Matt? <laughs> I have, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And also, some natural hormonal boosters. So I was on TRT for about, uh, I think I was on it for five, maybe six years. And, you know, it was powerful. Uh, it was interesting. And then I got off, it's been about a year. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried hormone, like natural hormone boosting supplements for, for ages. I kind of gave up on them. That's why I got onto TRT. But Mark stuff has made me a believer. So we're just kind of trying to make it we're just tweaking it a little more. We just, you know, we just love tweaking things, trying to make them as powerful as they possibly can be. So yeah, it's coming out on the female doesn't side. Want a powerful man? Come on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. It's a good thing. And on the female side, so our first product's going to be a P. So we have a PMS formula coming out. Um, again, we have a new formulator that's uh, an absolute genius. He's a neuroscientist. He used to be a former nuclear submarine engineer, just to, it tells you our, the range of his IQ. And yeah, he's a Chinese herb wizard. And we have two formulas coming out from him. One is a PMS formula. And the other one is the most powerful adaptogenic, talking about resilience, the most powerful adaptogenic formula I've ever tried. I actually never really believed in adaptogens until I tried his stuff. Like I, I love the concept of adaptogens, but you know, I tried all kinds of things over the years, all kinds of formulas, and nothing really worked. But he's also a neuroscientist, and we've done hardcore brain trainings with them where we're a little fried by day three. And then typically he would pull out that formula and give it to us. And then we're just like, whoa, I feel good again, and I can keep training. So, yeah, really happy to bring this, this product to market. And then we're working on some other really interesting things on the female side, including – a probiotic blend for women. And we're also working on something that's going to be a way more sophisticated. That's going to truly optimize a woman throughout their various phases of the month. So that's what's coming out for women. And again, we got some really fun stuff coming out for men. So yeah, we're excited. Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. We, yeah. I feel like we could talk for hours. I'm sure we'll do a part three. Yeah. I just want to give everybody some direction here. Check out the show notes to purchase Newtopia, to purchase by optimizers. Essentially, you can head on over to newtopia.com slash Varga or by optimizers.com slash Varga. And you can find all of my favorite things on my favorites page at Rachel varga.ca matt it was a pleasure to have you on the show look forward to seeing you in real life at an upcoming conference yeah and yeah well yeah definitely swing by the booth yeah we're looking forward to meeting you for sure for sure it'd be like soul family meeting all these amazing good looking biohackers i'm telling you the best looking people in the world are biohackers and regulate well regulated ladies and gents so yeah, and, ha and happy as well. You know, it's something you notice when you're at an event like Dave Asprey's is like, wow, everybody just seems in a good, happy mood. Like it's it, you know, very difficult to find anybody that's not. So that's an unusual part of it. And but if, if anybody's wondering what I just took 20 caps of, it's our Mouselimes. I am on a three-day fast. And one of the things that will improve autophagy, in our opinion, is is taking a lot of proteolytic enzymes and mass is the strongest protein digesting enzyme on the market. So I'm going to take probably about 50, 60 a day for the next three days. And by the way, we'll, a handful. I'm, I'm, I'll be right like, there with you. Yeah. Like three, three doses of a 20 caps and you will notice definitely some improvements on your skin. Um, yeah. Cause you know, blood sugar, elevated blood sugar will aid your skin. So anything you can do to, to do that and break down old undigested proteins, I think, both of those cause aging. In fact, there's a really good book on, on aging. And one of the new theories on what's killing super centenarians, which is people that live above a hundred is protein accumulation in the cells and the cells stop functioning and basically the body dies. So those long yeah. cells. Yeah. I do those long fasts. I experienced this firsthand with a five to seven day long fast in the desert at altitude 
taken my magnesium breakthrough. I'm not even k- kidding you. Feeling limitless. That was that was just the tip of the iceberg. Was doing. Were, a long were you doing fast. a dry fast? Uh, well, I wasn't because I was hiking. I did have to also watch my blood sugar levels, so I didn't eat rescuing. <laughs> As an avid outdoor enthusiast myself, I don't think most people would have been able to do what I did. And I was having um, mineral water, hydrogen water, magnesium. Mm -hmm. I was having probably less than about 400 calories a day, consisting of Paleo Valley meat sticks and some fresh fruit from Whole Foods. So not 100% keto, not 100% Mm -hmm. uh, like no food kind of fast, just for safety reasons. I got to yeah. tell you, though, that little extra brain fog or that little extra bit around the waistline, just gone. And mm-hmm. also, you know, the best skin of my life. So, yeah. got to, you know, trim out those those zombie cells, those senescent cells, right? They're not serving you any purpose. <laughs> They're just aging you, making your skin look like garbage and making your brain be slow. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll do a long fast. I already did my one for the year, so we'll yeah. check back when I'm ready to do another one. Yeah, fasting's fun. It was awesome. the key, was, was the ketones hit. By the way, can I give you a pro tip on fasting? Day three sucked. All right, we we talked about mass time. I'm I'm going to give you the the ultimate hack to make fasting easier than you've ever experienced in your life, and that is nootropics. I've I've been trying fasting with the nootropics. And yeah, technically, I mean, okay, it's some micro amount of calories. If you take the capsules, some micro amount of calories, but it will help you be energized and it will also minimize the down regulation of NEAT. So NEAT is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And what happens is typically on day two and especially on day three, a lot of people just don't want to move, right? They just, that's your body kind of shutting you down, trying to preserve your energy. You take nootropics, first of all, it'll help mitigate hunger because, you know, stimulants will do that and it'll energize you. I, I don't know. I just found it super easy to fast using nootropics. So something for you to try. Wonderful. Well, maybe next summer, fall, when I'm going to be ready to do my next year, yearly long fast, let's do this. Let's, uh, you know, yeah. do some labs before, during, and at the end of it too and get super technical and uh, I love this idea of doing some nootropics because just the um, the awareness of yourself, body, mind, spirit, energy, what you process during that time, it's really powerful because you basically get the stuff out of the way that's in the way of your mm-hmm. your heart, of you feeling what you need to feel at that time and, and that present moment awareness. is Like this is powerful stuff. It felt very biblical, actually, which yeah. is really cool. And I'm going to go lift weights and, you know, I've done like pretty hard workouts on that day five, like squatting on day five of a fast. And yeah, it's powerful, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you soon in person and thank you so much for your time to be here on the show. We went way over time. So thank you for your time and everybody head on over to newtopia.com slash Varga by optimizers.com slash Varga. Everything's in the description of this episode and stay high vibe. Stay radiant and be resilient, radiant and beautiful. Thanks for having me.